Hello, thank you for coming here. Uh, I'm from former Soviet Union, as you can tell by my accent. And when I came here 20 years ago, it was a complete complete shock to me that uh, leftist ideas are very popular here. And uh, left is basically poisoning kids in schools and colleges. And uh, we, you mentioned Dennis Prager, and he saved me after Obama was elected second time. He was talking about five stages of grief, and it was exactly like was my experience. So anyway, my question is, uh, what is your opinion about conservative radio? And also, I would recommend all young people to listen to conservative radio. And who is your favorite talk show host? I, there are too many to count. Rush is the original one. But I, thank you so much for mentioning that, that you're, you're from the Soviet Union and you're horrified by the evils of leftism and of totalitarianism. Because I, I didn't live in the Soviet Union forever, but I, I did visit Cuba briefly over the summer. And the first thing I noticed there is that people don't wear Che Guevara t-shirts in Cuba. The Cubans don't wear them. White liberals wear them in the United States. White useful idiots in America wear Che Guevara t-shirts because they don't know the horrors of enslavement and property confiscation and physically being brutalized by the government. They don't know what that's like. Uh, they, they, uh, they would deny, I think, the reality of those things. What they wear in Cuba are American flags. I saw it a dozen times in just a few days, sewn onto jeans, on their little bicycles, on the few meager pieces of property that they're allowed to have without it being confiscated. It's so important. And this, this your, your point on conservative talk radio uh, gets back to uh, something that I brought up a little earlier. You know, I love Dennis Prager. Dennis is my cigar buddy. We're very fortunate to have him in Los Angeles. And sometimes the sophisticates, the academic types, they say, oh, how can you listen to conservative talk radio? They take complex ideas and boil them down and make them so simple. Dennis Prager is a very, very intelligent guy. And he has an amazing gift to boil down complex things and go piece by piece and make them uh, digestible to a mass audience. That is a wonderful thing. There should be no snobbishness here. There should be no uh, nose in the air, you know, trying to sip your Chablis or something like that. These are real problems. And I fear that people who grew up in privilege, ironically, it's all the people yelling at us about our privilege that are the ones that uh, have had privilege uh, destroy their minds and distort their vision. Uh, people who have grown up in privilege, they don't understand what, uh, how brutal the conclusion of leftist ideas can really be. And I hope that conservative talk radio helps, but I also hope that people like you who have seen it firsthand, who have experienced it, uh, can, can talk up and tell them what you've seen and explain uh, reality to, to these people. It's, it's a very important thing, and it's, a, it's an irony. Uh, when they're like willing to listen. But some people say, oh, no, 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 it just happened there, it never happened here, and they don't understand that this is utopia which kills people, literally kills. It's not just making people poor, it just socialism kills. It, it does, utopia kills, people think utopia means the best place, that's what they think the word means. It doesn't, it means no place. That's what the word, it means no place, it doesn't exist, it's a fantasy. In uh, Democrat politicians used to frequently quote a line from George Bernard Shaw. They would say, some people see things that are and ask why, but I dream things that never were and ask why not. And they say this as though it's some uplifting, inspirational quote. What they fail to mention, because they don't read beyond the, the quote book, is that it wasn't George Bernard Shaw who said that. It was George Bernard Shaw writing in the mouth of the serpent tempting Eve in the play Back to Methuselah. Those are the words of the devil, and uh, that, that utopian vision it leads to very, very dark places. We've seen it for so long, well over a century, and uh, un unfortunately, people seem to forget, and what is that they tell you when you forget history and you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat it, sadly.